Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bulldozer Investing. It is March 5th, 2021, 6.47 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. Friday, end of week. What a volatile, crazy week it was. Let's go ahead and quickly uh, go over um, some of the tickers that I have here on my list. But before we go over, i like to conclude that anything I say in this video or the entire channel, it's for educational purposes only. By no means, it's any um, trading advice, okay? So let's go ahead and begin. First in our list is VIX, as always. <clears throat> Remember, there are some critical points that I mentioned last time and I'm in my video. I said that VIX has to go over the cloud and contain and maintain that cloud top in order for the market to be bearish. So every time it tried, we got long candles. These are very long candles, so it shows you how volatile it was during the day. Um, it tells me that yes, market is trying to pick up. So even though you see these long VIX to the upside, uh, it's coming back down and it went up in a huge solid bearish engulfing candle here, uh, which went below the 100 day moving average. I think the uh, 50 day moving average will be the support. Um, we'll see if VIX can hold 23s. If not, you're looking at 20s. So to me, <clears throat> this should be another trend right here okay so if vix can, if vix cannot hold this trend line and it looks like a megaphone in a in a way but <clears throat> i'm going to go ahead and remove this and make this like a resistance right here so <clears throat> we'll see how this goes for now it it could even look like this okay Yeah, I think this would be a better look. So <clears throat> for now, it has to hold it. It looks like it's a it's a triangle or a pennant, you might say, but it looks more of a triangle. It cannot be a pennant because it doesn't have a long base. So we'll see if uh, if it holds 23s. If not, the market will be bullish. So I'll be watching on that carefully. But this is super bearish on the um, VIX chart. So it's good for the market. Next up is SPY. Let's pull up the chart. I'm going to do daily and weekly. Um, <clears throat> SPY, it tried to go in the cloud twice in a row. And it was picked up and it was saved, uh, which is a good sign. But the issue here is the 90 moving average. Every time we touched it for the last couple of days, even though sometimes we closed over it and it looked bullish, bam, it goes down. So I want to, to be able to be bullish on um, SPY, I want to see if we can break above the uh, 9 and the 20. Currently, um, MACD looks bearish. There's no way that I could say this MACD looks bullish. Uh, stochastics, still, it's on a wedge. But I would say wait for the market. These, these saves uh, might not work. It's good that we finished over 377.8. 80 and I mentioned that on my video or on my uh, tweet today let's take a look at the weekly <clears throat> on the weekly it looked like it almost touched uh, the 20 but it didn't so last time one of these big dips right uh, we could do something like this touch 100 go back up maybe this is like a 60% retracement let's take a look this is the weekly, by the way. It went over. It went well over the 60%, 61.8% retracement. So, yeah, right here you see the body of this um, candle, the weekly candle. It's sitting between 61.8 and 50%, um, and then the top of it is very close to the 50% Fibonacci level. Uh, this is also technical in a way, but for now. I want to hold off on the idea that, yes, we finished uh, and we're going much higher. I, I, I can't say that right now. Um, we have to wait for the stimulus. We have to wait for a couple um, other things. March is always shaky. February, March is always shaky. Um, I don't want to show an example of last year because obviously it was coronavirus. But you see this one, two, and three. It took three weeks. So one, two, three. Um, most of the down, most of the down candles, if, if you get, so sometimes it could take up to five weeks. This is, was, this was the coronavirus crash. So what I could say, th this is not really a down week, I would say, but one, two, three, four, 
so it takes a month um, so let's wait for another week to finalize because we could retest uh, 369 worst case scenario which this was my target of the worst of the worst was and I said like about uh, 358 level so let's see how that holds for me I think the top of these candles makes sense that we could come down that far or maybe you, you see the uh, January lows we could touch that touch the 20 on the spy and come back up on the upside my expectation is four hundred and eleven dollars okay but for now I can't I can't say that uh, I'm neutral so I can't really say it's gonna go up or down unless uh, we have four weeks so you see this one two three four takes a month so let's see how we do next week and then we'll see the recovery from afterwards next up is QQQ let's see how Nasdaq is doing Nasdaq pretty much it it <clears throat> performed as much uh, it, perf it performed as I expected if you listen to my video last Friday I said that we might see 308 worst case scenario it actually drilled down went a lot lower at like 297 um, but a quick pickup and the way it finished above the 20 so spy is below 20 on the week on the weekly though I can't remember let's let's that, that was the daily though on the weekly it's a good sign that we finished above the 20 moving day average um, Nasdaq to me looks more ready for a reversal than um, spy So let's go ahead and delete all this. Will we see continuation? I don't know. The major support, again, nobody can call the top or the bottom. Our, um, the, way, the reason why we do technicals is to guess how far or how much we could go down, but we don't know when it will stop because we don't have the power hand, right? We don't have that hand of saying, okay, let's stop the market going down. Uh, we're not politicians, we're not big funds. We can only watch and see the momentum. But the sell volume, it's kind of concerning. The, the way that it moved up with very light volume, and then look at the body of these candles, it's huge. So I don't know how much of the selling on the week, these are weekly uh, volumes, uh, how much of it is a buy or and how much is it a sell, I don't know. But here we saw the cloud bottom. From 237 to 168, let's do some math, 237 to 168. That's $69, and then let's divide 69 by 237 to get the percentage. That was a 29% drop uh, um, of the uh, March. So let's say like 30%. So let's see how um, how much how much percentage we dropped from uh, the highs right now. I know a lot of the growth uh, names have dropped 50%. So it's it's not really like don't when I do QQQ drop don't just say oh because QQQ drop 30 I should only drop 30 it depends on what kind of stock you have even it might be a you know Nasdaq stock but it could be a growth stock and those got affected up much more so 338 I'm just rounding it up what do we say 297 let's say that I'm just rounding numbers here 12% so we've dropped 12% in three weeks, but how long did it take us to um, get to that 12%? So from November, let's say December, to all the way to March, so it took three months to get that 12% and we lost it in three weeks. And that's why uh, the drops are very, very painful because you make that money in three months and then bam, you give it away in three weeks and more maybe depending on the stock you have. Now, if you had Apple, Apple even dropped more than 12% the last three weeks. So <clears throat> worst case scenario, we could test 50, which would be 271. Let's say this is rounded to 270, okay? So 338 minus 270, divide that by 338, that would be a 20% drop, which would be a major, like a good correction. Can that happen? I don't know, but the bottom of these two two bottoms right here that we established in uh, August and October or November, November, October, and end of October. So this could be a nice support area. So always get ready for the worst. And the worst to me, it seems like it would be a 270 
and that would be a 20% drop from the bottom. And any lower than that, that would be a bear market, starting of a bear market. Uh, where could we go up from here? Um, if this, if today's uh, action was the low, again, this is the weekly chart. Let's pull out the daily. That was a nice bear flag. Let's look at the daily. So if this was the bottom, uh, the cloud top basically, about like 320s. So the last three days, maybe, you know, what was this Monday? The second was what? Tuesday? Yeah, second was Tuesday. So we might go back to Tuesday's price action. Um, your 20, 50 day moving average, which is sitting at 320, that I think is where I see um, the major resistance. We'll see how the market reacts. So we just have to sit and watch. Like I said, we could go down to 270. Then that's a 20% drop altogether. And that would mean that, okay, the market is ready for the next uh, bullish run. Next up is Dow. So DIA, diamonds. Dow wasn't affected as much because of the energy sector. I know the, the, the travel sector did drop down today, but I do see this immerse head and shoulder. I mean, it's not really defined, but the cloud top was a good support. 50-day uh, moving average was a good support. Um, I do see resistance up at 318. I see a support around 300, so 305, 300. Now, every low target that I gave and possible drop and bounce scenario last from last week, so SPY and QQQ was right on target, one or two dollars off. That I mean, I can't predict everything, right? But whereas Dow, when I said it could hit 300, it held pretty strong. So Dow is moving strong because of the energy sector, the oil. So all your um, clean energy stocks went down bad, pretty bad. But then where your all your um you know oil gas all the um you know bp exxon all those uh companies um chevron all these companies have picked up ge uh and some of the airlines i think probably finished flat this week but they ran up pretty good uh when the market was crashing so this would be this red line that we drew would be a possible bottom for dow but the energy sector is basically um uh helping dow to stay up here Next up is Russell. I think Russell is the one that got hit the hardest. Um, but a good sign is that a very nice candle today uh, picked up from the lows. And the we did say 208. And we did say this Fibonacci would be the support. So most of the time, people want me to do um, videos every day. And I've mentioned that you know I'm doing construction in my basement by myself. So it's very hard to even buy the material, carry it home do the construction, then take out the trash, go to landfill. So it takes a lot of time. And I do this after like 5, 530 after my job is over. Even my weekly videos. So if you watch the weekly, weekly videos, as I mentioned, uh, pretty much the indexes went down as far as I thought it would. Or at least I said if it goes down, it would be the support. So the support held pretty good. Um, the resistance here on um, Russell is going to be 220. And then the most upside for next week would be 224. Now, remember that if we're in a bear market, which I don't think we are yet, but um, the spikes are really violent and like really fast going up. And then they just drag you down even twice as hard. So watch out for that and make sure that when you make enough money, you protect yourself. Um, don't get because don't if you have puts don't get sucked into oh, the market is going to go all the way down um or if you you know if you think you're picking up don't think that we fully recovered i'd say the fully recovered part would be you see this upper trend on the megaphone um if we break above that yes and a major major resistance is sitting at 227 so 224 220, 227 is going to be russell's um uh resistance levels okay Next up is Apple. Apple at 118, so it did hit our um, golden box, which we thought it would. Um, the worst case scenario for Apple would be 111, uh, which I think is going to be a great support. But this wedge is playing out as we expected, 
and resistance are again your um, nine day and the 100 day. So nine days sitting at 123, 100 days sitting at 125. Give or take, if we break out, I think this this breakout out of the wedge would be a false breakout, and that false breakout would be 128. I would be a seller, so if I bought Apple at today's lows, I would be a seller at 126 or 127 to 128 if you're trading it. Now, if you're doing a long position, um, I've always mentioned that I'm expecting by summertime, I'm expecting anywhere from 180 to 200 for Apple. Um, but in order that to happen, we need to break out of this wedge and then it'll, it'll that, that breakout is going to be violent. So by summer, uh, I do see Apple going to 180, but you're going to say that that's almost 80%. Are you crazy? Uh, not really. So taking a look at, you know, July to August went from $88 to 137. So why not? You know, I'm saying summer, like by August. So let's see how that, how that goes. Next up is AMD. So these these uh, stocks that I'm reviewing today are basically my picks because if I were to ask people, I know we're going to get a lot of requests because a lot of people are concerned with a lot of stocks they own. So I didn't want to make the list long today. Just want to keep it short and clean. Um, so if you're instead of AMD, if you have Micron or if you have any chip sector, about the same thing. So these two, so we're back down again. The September and on uh, October 30th or November, the first week of November lows. Would this be a good target to buy? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that it, it dipped pretty good from 99 and my expectation was towards 92 and then 104 eventually. I think 120 was my target. Yeah. So now that 120 is my target, you know, picking this up at 75 and aiming for 120, that's about 80%. Um, I don't know how the valuations work or what the valuation of AMD is. I'm not I'm not an uh, analyst. So, but what I could tell you is that the bottom here is pretty good. And the second support is going to be right here this cloud line right here, okay? So there you go. If you buy in this range and if it drops to like 67, that's going to that's going to make you 100%. Um I would say that that would be a very nice um, areas to get, but uh, I mean, no offense, it did break down the cloud. Um, yeah, it's bare, so I'm not telling, or I'm not suggesting any name. So any name that you think there's a discount, there could be more discounts. Trust me, I've seen things fall pretty hard. And this chart looked bullish as heck. I, I, I mean, again, it got affected. So if you if you have a name, if you own a name, there's nothing wrong about the business. Sales are doing great. Company is growing, and it got affected by this drop. You shouldn't be concerned. You should only be concerned if something is wrong and there's bad news, right? So, and I don't see like heavy volume sell. It's just getting affected maybe because you know funds are selling off their techs. And trust me, don't get into energy at this moment because once the techs start building up, end of month. So, I would say by the end of March, we're gonna see a huge rally on the techs. So just try to keep on averaging or do some rotation, just sell the winners and average down the losers. Uh, if the company is good in that sense, like AMD is a solid company. So if you want, and if you want to, you can av average down AMD. Um, and looking at, you know, last year lows is 38. I don't think it's going to get to 38 coronavirus crash, but if it does get to 67, 68 area, that would be a steal. Because my target is 120, that would mean that uh, 100%. Or buying leaps for next year, next January, next May, 120 would be a pretty good deal if it gets to 60s. Um, but if we do move up, uh, I see the resistance at $90. So that's my target. If if the market reverses, I would see I would say that AMD would be 90. Next up is Amazon. A lot of people also might have, you know, Amazon, and I thought that it would be a good indicator a good chart to go over um as you know it's a solid company the business is good i don't think corona ever affected them in fact corona actually helped them uh, to grow their business so uh, this this is just a waterfall and i think you look at this bottom i think i i think the bottom is in look at the bottom of this candle did i click it what, what did i do one second Look at the bottom of this candle. 
and the bottom of the can this candle is a little lower but i'm just going to go with the previous one and look at it so we did hit so one two and three and it was a very nice pickup that's a hundred dollar move right there um my target almost reached there i you know i, I did say you know it could go down to 285 or 2850 so it got pretty close and i said that when we were here so a lot of people had like put you know dislikes and you know sent me messages uh, saying that i don't know anything well yeah i don't know anything i've always admitted that because when we were here i said yeah there's a big resistance if we break above look for this megaphone tie or this upper you know channel it's a diamond formation and it's bearish don't get sucked into a bullish run uh the case i saw was 3500 versus 28 when i said 3500 uh, uh, yeah 30 so 3500 to 2800 would be your bearish and bullish scenario and i mentioned that to the upside is limited but downside is more risky so i'm always neutral i wouldn't suggest amazon and i said that now my view has changed I do believe that now Amazon should pick up from here all the way above and it should get back in this channel and maybe test the cloud around, uh, you know, 3,200s. More downside if we see. So what, what could be, you know, the worst case scenario here? I would say like the 2,400s. I, I mean, I don't think it would get there in all honesty but it's good. it's sitting at a good support line right now i i think it would be a good uh area to position technically it would be a good area to position in um, but it cannot lose this bottom so if it does then it's going to go to 2800 okay next up is arc g so the reason why i'm reviewing arc g is because a lot of the um genomic stocks you know pacp edit crispr all these stocks got crushed now, would it be a better value to buy them instead of Arc G? I, I don't know. You can make that decision on your own. Um, but it, do, it did look very bearish when it broke down 61.8. And then it finished right above it. So how far can it go? Well, well, the, the furthest I would say would be 64. That would be a crazy move, but... I don't think it's it's going to retest. So the, I'd say the resistance is around $90. And if it falls any more, you can you can say that the top right here. Okay. If it falls any further, I would say 76 like middle 7650s. So that area would be a good area technically to get something started, but also keep in mind that 64 would be the worst case scenario which is 100 percent. i mean uh you know the previous tops right here like right here okay you see this top here and then you see this bottom here so i'm not going to draw that because we have we already have a fib for it which is the 100 percent. i mean i i don't see the reason why you would do let me take the 100 percent off so yeah let's go ahead and do a red there you go and there you go there you go. So that would be your second stop around 65. But I look for a 76. If it gets there again, that would be a good, you know, time to position in. Because what I think is that Kathy is going to keep on buying, you know, CRISPR. It's, she's not going to let it go because she thinks genomics is the future and she's going to keep on buying it. Most of ArcG is made up of, you know, CRISPR, PACP, Edit, and all those other names. I can draw formations. I can, uh, yeah, pretty much broke this trend and then you have another trend right here pretty much broke down that as well so it just looks like it just died off right um, but that's when you want to get in when people are in pain I mean it would have been a beautiful play if it if it broke out of this wedge but it just kept crushing down 90 moving average or the cloud bottom at 93 will be First is 90 and then 93 will be resistance. I'd probably sell if it gets up there and then try to uh, buy it back around 83, okay? Next up is Arc K. So I think Kathy's ETFs are basically 
looking almost the same. I mean, looking at this chart again, it drilled down 61.8 and then it picked up and closed above 61.8. And then if I look at the resistance or the, or the support, you see this, um, you know, November and October highs and November highs. And then that would be your support, which is, and then the strongest support would be the September and then the bottom here at November. So there you go. These two, so it held 104, 105 area, pretty good. Worst case scenario, 90, and it could get there. And I'll tell you the reason why. It went from 54 to 33, okay? So 54 to 33, almost 20 bucks, so 21. Uh, divide by 54. That's a 38.8, so 39% drop, okay? Now we're looking at, we're looking at right now 159.7, so let's just call that 160, okay? 160 minus, currently it dropped to like what, 104, 105, let's say 105. Oh, I did the math. I'm sorry. It shouldn't be 106. It should be 160. 34%. So the drop on Kathy's, uh, well, it could have been higher, actually. I'm going to do three years. Actually, it went from 61 to 33. So let's do that. 61 to 33, 28 divided by 61, 45, 46%. So if we give or take, take the, you know, 46% off of 160, you're looking at 73. That's a huge discount. I, I don't know. I don't know. That would basically take off all the, all the investors off of, um, all the uh, Corona investors, the the people who had no clue about the market that just went in, um, they'll probably die off and they'll quit the market. So you're look. I, I would say the worst case would be 81 in this case, because there is no reason why Arc could die down 46 percent. Um, I would say this. Look for a resistance at 124 and a support at 105. However, I've given you lower levels just in case, $90 and $81. So these are just in case supports that I, that I wanted to mention. And I think that this could even move higher with the cloud. I'd say the cloud line would be better, much make better, better, better sense at 93. And then you're looking at 80. Let's increase that a little bit. Yeah, I think these are better. So you're looking at 93 and 85 as the worst case. And if it, it's 85, you can just buy any growth stock and it'll just go fly up, okay? Next up is Boeing. Now, Boeing is an interesting name. If you look at like any other energy stock, any other airline stock, any other cruise lines stock, they're going to look the same. Um, remember on my long video analysis of Boeing, what did I say last time? Look for resistance and do not get sucked into a false breakout. Now what happened, it basically touched the uh, 78.6 Fibonacci at 236. Bam, it went down to 213 and then close at 223 a lot of action a lot of action from the last three days um i would say hold off on boeing because when the energy sector and all these you know oils oil sector are going to get sold off at the end of uh march maybe a, a week before the end of the month boeing might get hit so that's what I'm worried about. And I, I do see a clear, you know, resistance at 229, 230, let's say. I'd be a buyer at Boeing at 202. Now, I'm, I'm not saying it could drop there, but 
Just wait for a couple of weeks and let's see how that works. Um, yeah, I see like an inverse head and shoulder here, a breakout, but then you see this 78.6 is going to be a huge resistance at 236. Upside, 243. Downside, 202. Worst case scenario, 193. So those are your levels to watch. Um, I don't have a magic eight ball. I can't say that it's going to move up or down, but my prediction is that lots and lots and lots of um, energy stocks are going to get sold off when the tech finally finishes off its drop. So you want to move two steps ahead and make that arrangement. Next up is Fubo. Fubo basically, I was wrong on Fubo because I kind of got happy that, you know, we broke out, looked like we were playing the pennant and I thought that it was going to bounce from 35 and play this game and then eventually break out. What happened was it did test the bottom of 100 day moving average twice, two days in a row. And the bulls stepped in big time. This was like a 15% move, 12%, 15% move again. So the bulls kind of picked it up. The MACD is completely not finished yet. Stochastics is still hanging around. It's still not oversold yet, which is surprising. But we finished right at the 100-day moving average. which is a 29.90, so 29.96. Uh, after hours 30, 13, 30, 25, so around 30, um, give or take. It's it's kind of good that we were managed to finish off right above the 100 day. Now move to the upside is going to be 33.31 and 36 dollars. Move to the downside. I don't think it has much. It has much more downside left, honestly. Um, I don't. I can't see any further downside for this stock. Um, and this stock can move very fast. Like it moved from today. What is the low today? 26 something, 26, 26 to $30, four dollars. It can move $4 instantly. So this is a stock that you're like, oh my God, my average is like 20 points up. It can move 10, 15 points a day. So it's, it's a violent stock. Sometimes you just need dry powder to average down. Sometimes you need time, but using margin on such a volatile stock could hurt you. So either you can sell a covered call. Somebody asked like, what is a covered call? Um, I would say just type covered call on YouTube. I, I mean, I don't want to spend time here explaining what it is, but basically I'll just, I'll just tell you in a shorthand very simplistic way so here you are you are this guy and you have a stock fubo let's say and the current price so current price is thirty dollars okay your average is 25 or your average is 35 let's say and you believe so this is your average and you believe that the stock is not going to go anywhere. It's either going to stay the same or it's going to drop more because of the bear market. So what you could do possibly is what or what people do is sell, you know, 35 or 40 calls. Maybe the, fur the further you sell, the, the more money you get credit. So if you sell these calls against your shares, so if you have 1,000 shares, you can sell 100 I'm sorry, you can sell 10 calls. Let's say 10, 10 calls, so you can sell 10 of them, 40 calls, three weeks out. And you get the premium. So let's say that 40 calls is about $2, right? So you're going to get $200 times 10. So they're going to give you $2,000 of credit within the three weeks. If it does not get to 35 or 40, so this is 40, if it does not get to $40, you'll keep this money. Even if it gets to 39. If it gets to exactly 40 or 4001, whatever it is, right? So you're you're at a 50-50 line. Um 
you still keep the premium. I think that's what happens. I, I never had faced like exactly. Like, I sold a call and it ended right there. Um, but you might keep the 2000 or maybe 1900 around there. And then the person who bought your calls or the people, um, if they don't have enough money to get the 1000 shares, they won't get it. If it's automatically assigned, um, your shares will be sold at $40. The risk is that your upside will be limited because in three weeks, if the stock goes to $50, they'll sell your shares at 40. Now, if the stock just goes very slowly there, it'll eat the premium and you'll, you get to keep your premium. But if it goes really fast, really high, then you're gonna not only lose from the premium you got because the options are gonna go higher and then um, they're just gonna your your institution or whatever you know fund you're you know playing with like TD Ameritrade whatever. If they do decide to sell near the end of your expiration, they'll sell it for you. So you have to sign an agreement. But that's the whole thing. So you have the stock. Your average is you know good to go. You know your average. You don't care if you know if it's below 30. It, you know you don't care because then you come out even or you can come out you know. If your average is at 30 and you're willing to sell your shares at 40, either way, you're happy. So that, and then you basically, you're just selling it for the premium. You can get this money. If you want to keep it aside and don't use it fine. But if you do want to use it, you can buy more stocks. I mean, I don't know. That's your decision. Just watch, watch YouTube videos. They'll explain it with better graphics and better, you know, animations, but that's what it is. Okay. So that's Fubo for you. Next up is Neo. Again, I wanted to include this name and Tesla today we'll go over. Just doing it alphabetically. MACD is not done. Stochastic's not done. RSI is oversold. It's ridiculous how much it's oversold. At $31, $32, I think it was a good deal. You could get, you know, honestly, what I thought, somebody messaged me the other day and said, what's the lowest it could go? when it was somewhere here, I said that if it loses the 100 day moving average, most likely I see, you know, $40, 42 to 40. Now it ended, it ended near 40, but honestly, there's no way that I would have, there's no technicals here that could tell me that it's, you know, it's going to hit there. I mean, I could put up Bollinger Bands or whatever, but it just doesn't, you know, I don't have it on my chart. I don't know where the Bollinger Bands can expand, keep on going down, so it doesn't really tell you how far. But um, honestly, you know, you're looking here. You're looking here, and that's where it's held. Um, can it go down? The chart looked so bullish. This W Dragon formation, I would have had, this was one of the stocks that I was dead wrong on. Um, I thought we were going for 80s, 82s. Now it's sitting at 32, 38. So why not? I mean, uh, honestly, um, if you were to risk play here, 30, and it goes back up to previous highs, you could almost make 100%. So a small entry here would make sense for me. I mean, I, I don't know. The company debt or whatever you're, you know, you're doing the valuations and so forth. I think that the battery replacement. I think if if you know Neo comes to America and starts selling cars in America, I think they they can go somewhere. I mean, I, I mean, I'm patriotic. I'd probably buy um, Tesla over Neo because it's an American company. But then again, Tesla sells cars in China. China, they're as nationalistic as you know I am, but. Um, they buy Tesla. Tesla sells more in China as of what I think. I think they sell more. Um, they have lots of supercharging stations in China. So China loves to buy American stuff, actually. Apple, iPhones, um, Macs, Tesla. So why not, you know? You, you got to do some free trading. So if, if we're allowed to sell there, then as long as they open a factory and, you know, they, you know, do some, they hire American people, why not? But I think that's a growth story for Neo, and I do think that eventually it's going to hit $82. I still, my mind has not changed on it. I just thought the bottom would be this right here, and it went right below it. Okay, maybe hitting margin calls or maybe tight stop losses and so forth. Just pull the stock. But I'm looking for $82.
on this and near future 52 would be my call right there. Next up is Nvidia. So I did do AMD and Nvidia chart is damn broken. I mean, honestly, there's no way that somebody can say that this chart looks bullish, but And it's such a good company, it just doesn't make sense to me why this chart is so broken. It just kills me to see NVIDIA with such a good business, with coronavirus, a lot of, you know, the graphic cards, gamers, and internet. You guys think that just because you have internet at home that everybody has internet around the world? No. And people are just figuring out this gaming and, you know, Twitch and whatever, right, this, the gamers, clubs, and, you know, even the Bitcoin um, mining. So NVIDIA is out there. And then there, you know, artificial intelligence, um, you know, driverless cars with augmented reality. All, all these things are tied up into NVIDIA, and it's such a good company. Earnings are great. I don't know. After the earnings, I don't. I honestly don't know why this stock got crushed. Now, one support that I see here is this gap and this candle right here. And, and that is where it basically held. And if it can't if it if it can't hold that line, you're looking at four hundred and thirty dollars. I honestly I think this is a good company in the long run. It just keeps going. It it has violent drops and it could just kill you and like go down forever. This I think this was the 2018. And then look how little coronavirus like the 2018 crash wasn't as much as, you know, it was worse than the um, uh, Corona crash, honestly. Corona just held it right on the cloud and it just kept going. It was a nice, beautiful flag. I think we're going to go to 700s. And then all you know is that it hit the 100% Fib level and just went down. Um, actually, the weekly, let's put this as well so that we, when we go back to daily, on the weekly, you can see a very nice support around what is this 450s let's go back to daily chart just take a one final look so these are your levels so this is a good support and it bounced really hard actually it bounced from once 470 all the way to 498 that was a good bounce finish the day positive so that's good but the resistance is here So you're looking at a resistance of 515, 516. So just watch out for that, okay? Um, good company. If you're in for long term, just keep it for long term. If you're in for a trade, I don't have any confirmation how much more it could go down. Because you, once you get a violent you know, turn like that, it's volatile. But it could die off and come back and revisit 450. So we don't know that. Um, good long term stock. Keep it forever and you'll always make money love the ceo love the products grab in terms of graphic cards there's no one else better yeah and it looks like stochastics is about to turn over macd still needs time so give this stock a couple weeks two weeks let's see how the internals play out next up is palantir and i loaded on palantir whatever money that i had left um i bought palantir basically so total of 1,600 shares I have so far. It's not much maybe compared to other people, but I always say, you know, like I'm, I'm a small guy. I, I'm not a millionaire. Um, honestly, this pretty much got me. I just thought that we, you know, the bottom was 23. And all I know is I went out for a walk, you know, took my dog for a walk and I just turned on, you know, my app. And I saw 2017. I was like, are you kidding me? I couldn't believe my eyes. I was like, why couldn't I just wait for another day? I would have gotten this thing. At it's unbelievable right now. I mean, honestly, if you ask me, this is a good support area. Okay. It's a very nice support area. Yeah, you'll have some, you know, wicks going down and then eventually finishing the day above it. But um, 2318 is a very nice support area. 
I just would have, in the nine days, still acting as a resistance right here and is sitting right on the fib line of 2475. Um, so that's going to be a huge uh, resistance to break above. I, I just think that this company is going to be a long hold for me. Yeah, I mean, I could trade like I've, so, I've sold, you know, I sold and bought options, but I knew before and I mentioned that last review that the the earnings um, and the unlock period is going to be brutal for the company. So I, you know, stayed away. And I was like, you know what, back to my old average, I'm buying it again. So this time, I think I'm going to stick around for till the end of last year. Maybe I could long the stock more than a year. Um, this is going to be a good long hold and AWS news today is unbelievable. I mean, I work with AWS. I work for a contract for Department of Health and we do there. We, we basically move their entire system to cloud. Um, and to have, to have work, AWS working with you um along the side with the aws service that's just amazing i mean it, it makes it so much easier for people to transition into palantir um and it's such a good news and you guys will understand it in a couple of years as the ceo says whatever he's doing he's five years ahead he's damn right and this move and if he signs with um you know, Microsoft, Azure, another cloud operator, basically whatever AWS has, they have the same thing. Uh, if they get into all these cloud companies and Google eventually, um, this is a very good news for um, Palantir. My target is 55 um, for the end of the year, but since I'm going to keep it more than a year, my plan is to sell this at 100. Now, I'm not saying I don't have a technical indicator that says that this is going to go to 100, but all I can tell you is that it moves slowly. It can go up and down, up and down, and eat your patience away. This is a stock that you hold and don't look at. Kathy obviously bought so much because she knows something, at least her team. And she doesn't just go and buy stocks, right? It's a team of people working with her, but. Honestly, 90 moving average. So just just going back to technical, 24.75 is a huge resistance, and then you're looking at 28.50. Okay, 30 should be your goal if you're a swing trader. After 30, it might come down and relax a little, and then move up. Okay. Next up is space. So with space, then you know Chamath selling news kind of crushed the stock down so bad. Maybe he, because he sold it, it went down that much, but I, I don't know. I don't know why he sold it. I don't know if he even tweeted about it, but it looks like it almost touched our support line. And this is a low support. You have the support line here, the top red line, and then the bottom one. So it's back to January. And I don't see any reversal yet. So you might just be, you know, risking it. So if, you, if you're if you buying this stock right here, it's damn cheap in the first place. It's from $60. Now you're buying at $24. Um, how f much further it can drop? Worst case scenario that, you know, we could say. Worst case is 15 now, what I think is this trading range right here at 20 at most. That's what I think. 20 at most. I need the stock to bottom out in order for me to say, okay, it's time to go in. I need the stock. It's oversold, obviously, the RSI and so forth. I need the MACD to turn around and stochastics to turn around. And well, I'll say, okay, 23s looks like a bottom. But it could go down to 20s, 21s. Instantly, if Chamath says something, right? I went out because of this. I went out because of that. Or he could say, no, I had, you know, this was planned. Um, I was planning on selling it anyways. I could have sold it at 60. Um, it was for something else. And the stock can move up then towards $37.
So 37 to upside, downside is 2055. Worst, worst, worst case scenario. Where I would be buying with both hands would be 15. I don't know if it's going to get there. I don't think it will. Um, the bottoming out, you see how long it took the bottom out, the bottoming out of the process here. So it's about a whole month. So let's see if it's going to do that. And 20, 2055 would be the bottom of that curl. So if it goes like this, then so if it goes like this. Usually with the bottoms, you see this like a fake breakout. Okay. So you might get a fake breakout and then go. This level is going to be your resistance. This level is going to be your resistance. And this level is going to be your resistance. So 30, $40. So 40, 42, and 50. Your support is going to be around 20, 50, 21. So let's take a look at Tesla. Um, I tweeted today and I said that it's almost, you know, getting towards the bottom of the channel and that's where it will reverse. It actually broke down a bit, which is concerning to me. Um, but technically it wasn't concerning because look where it lines up to. The bottom, you see this flat line cloud, usually it's a good support area for any drop and it was spot on. Okay, that's your next area. And then your next area. You don't even have to do fibs, okay? Just look at the price levels and that's where it's going to be uh, 520 and 480. Now, I, I respect um, this guy, Suri Notes. Um, let me see if I can pull him up. He's pretty good. I, I respect him. I regard him. I'm not promoting him. I'm not telling you guys to buy anything off of him. But he does give all these charts, right? He usually gives pretty good targets and they hit spot on. I think XPEV and all these, you know, EV sector is a nice place to get in and sell your energy stock because then you're playing the reversal, you know. So he, he what, what I was looking for is he actually posted um, Tesla today. I kind of like to cheat off of him a little bit. This is Zoom. He guessed the upside neckline failed. He's saying that Zoom is going to eventually go to 200. I don't know. So he has like all these charts that he's usually right about. And I don't know when the heck did he post Tesla. Sometime today, actually. Oh, I wish I saved the chart. I don't want to take, you know, so much time off of you, you guys, but I wish that I've seen it or bookmarked it or something, right? What did he say about RK? We said like worst case 83, he's saying $80. Um, parabolic run, of course. Yeah, I, I don't see, I wish I caught it. But if you guys do have time, um, just search as Tesla and his chart is showing like ridiculous slow mouse. Like he's showing like 260. He has the Boeing. He's watching the spot. Usually this would be like buying point for him. Uh, we'll see. Let me see. I'm just going to take like a couple more seconds to see if I can see Tesla. Yeah, I mean, um, coincidentally, I, I've seen. Yeah, there you go. He has Tesla. Okay. So. Uh, this wasn't the chart, by the way, but his guess was like right around here. He was saying, um, he's saying like it's going to hit like 260, which kind of got my attention because I'm like, that that's really low. I don't have that kind of, uh, you know, X, because that Tesla going to 260, it's going to drag down SPY with it. I don't know what the percentage is, but it's definitely going to, you know, drag SPY with it. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see Tesla anywhere here. Let me see what he said about Uber. Not giving a target, but um, follow him. He has pretty good charts, and he does like long-term charts. He's he's not he's just like me. Like I I don't really do like okay, it's gonna get here in two days, type of thing. But he gives out targets, and they're usually right. Um, and he's pretty good at it. 
So Tesla's kind of looked like this, like it was a parabolic run and it hit the end and he was guessing like all the way to 79%. Um, I don't know why he uses 79% anyways, but I'd, I'd say follow that chart. If you can't find it, just go off to his uh, stock tweets or I think he also has a Twitter handle, um, Suri Notes. And he had that Tesla chart that I can't find and I just keep on scrolling and I can't find it. It's so annoying. So I said about 180 for Apple. He's saying 160. Yeah, there you go. I think we were looking for this. Um, no, this wasn't it either because he highlighted. Yeah, he, he was highlighting the 79% and he's at 247. That's just ridiculous. In my book, I, I just don't see it. Uh, worst case scenario, worst case 485 for me, but I, I don't know. He's saying 274, which is concerning. Um, let's see what uh, if that comes true or not, but I just wanted to point that out. Uh, for me, these would be the levels. 474 would be the worst case scenario. Um, yeah, it lost the cloud it is huge. It better get back in or reversal. So next week, you want to see Tesla above 652. Let's take a look at the weekly. Even at 420s, hitting the 50-day uh, moving average, that's where the corona crash was. So I'd also like to watch that as well. So this level is could also be doable. Now, you know, Tesla lovers, Tesla fans are going to hit me hard. I'm not a fan of anything, right? I might like the product and everything, but I'm just analyzing the chart for you. So 420, 421, and on the weekly, you have a you know bearish crossover on the MACD. And this could drag you to 420. And that means that your next run will start, just like coronavirus crash. A lot of people are just not seeing that it was $35 stock and it hit 900. So you have to consider that. And when, you know, when it goes down, just consider that on uh, January, the stock was about the same price. So, or December, whatever, right? This huge spike. This was all about Tesla inclusion in the S&P. That, you know, that run was ridiculous. So if we go ahead and revisit the 400s, I wouldn't be surprised. But it did hold my channel. Um, somebody told me, like somebody asked me um, how I came up with the channel. It was the weekly channel. So the low here, and I just went up and connected it. And there you go. That's how I came up with it, okay? So that's Tesla. Again, I don't see much upside. Maybe the upside would be 700. Uh, the downside would be 424. And there are a lot of fans out there. I just think that this inclusion news and all this run, happened for no reason. It was just like fear of missing out. I, I don't have any news or I don't have any reasoning why Tesla went up from 460 to 900 in two months. Did they start producing more cars? Did they double their sales? What happened? I don't know. So why is it falling down? It's because it went up 100% in two months. More than 100%, maybe 100%. Now it's going back down. That's the only way you can describe this fall. When you have a parabolic run, the drop is also parabolic, but to the opposite side. For me in the short term, I think this is a good support. It's going to retest the top of the bo uh, bottom of the cloud, which is at 650. Uh, your next resistance, the true resistance is going to be around 680s, 680 around there. Um, 420 would be a line that I'd watch and probably go long for. That's like where you got your news for, you know, Tesla inclusion and SMP. Okay. So that's all. Uh, we've been, uh, on record for 59 minutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my conclusion. Always look ahead. Even though I said the uh, coronavirus stocks are going to sell off, and it did. It had like major sell-offs from last week. Listen to my video. And I said that the airlines, the, the uh, energy sector is going to go up, and they did. 
So that's that's how you would have protected yourself. Uh, did I do it? No, because I had positions on a loss. So it's hard to sell something that you're losing on that I wish I did listen to my advice. Yeah. So another point here is that I think by the time end of March, when if we get further correction, tech is going to start running again. So give or take, give these energy stocks, give these, you know, airlines, cruises, travel sector, um, you know, Dow, a couple more weeks, and then I would get out. Because tech is going to go off the roof. So if ARC hits, this would be my thing. ARC, if ARC K, if ARC K hits about 85, 84, 83, that range, right? That's where you... That's where I would think QQQ would bottom out. That's where I would think we're going to have a huge reversal. And it's usually that. They always design it this way. So if the drop was on 160, right? Always divide that by half. So it's going to be 80. So they're going to drop at 80. And they're going. this is what they're going to do. They're going to go come back up to 159. And then go double that price all the way to 300. So people who couldn't hold and they had, you know, margin calls, they had to sell and then they lost all their money. Not only that, they're going to lose that 100% ride up to break even and then go another percent on top of it. I mean, if you look at the Corona, it went from 61 to 33, almost half, 49%. And then bam, from 33, it went up to 160. That's what they do to you. Okay. So I wouldn't be surprised if ARC hits 80 and that would be that would be the bottom and that's when the market is going to pick up and do its run again okay uh, and you know the coronavirus crash if we looked at spy we looked at qqq how much they dropped versus how many how much they did now so we looked at 12 percent versus 20 so i think we might have another eight percent drop in the next coming two weeks um just because we picked up today doesn't mean that that was the end of the run or if we might pick up monday tuesday that wouldn't mean that you know the, the drop is over um, as I mentioned today, that the stock market can, can go up for three months and then it takes only four days to, to scratch all your gains. We'll get the coronavirus crash since, you know, Trump got in the office until his end of term. That was like about four years, right? It took four weeks to wipe out four years of gain. So that's how violent these drops are. Um, but people know, like the big institutions, they're the ones who's selling. They know exactly when to sell and then they buy the bottom again and make money again. Um, as retail investors, we just don't know where the top is and we just don't know where the bottom is when they will start you know, buying back. But these levels, I hope, will give you an idea of where possible bottoms can be. That's why I draw a couple lines. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did enjoy the content, give us a like, um, please subscribe. I'll try to update, uh, you know, at least twice a week from now, since my personal you know, construction for the basement is going on and it's going to take so much time because I'm doing this by myself. Um, wish me luck guys. And I wish you all good luck. Uh, take care of your families. Health is the most important gift given to you. Nothing is more important. So keep up your health. See you next week.